we're going to be talking about events. What we call an event is simply a collection of sample points. Now remember, sample point is just another word for outcome. So we can also define an event as a collection of outcomes. Let's look at an example. Suppose we toss two coins. Now remember, if we toss two coins, the possible outcomes are head head, head tail, tail head, and tail tail. There are four possible outcomes. Now let's define the event A as getting at least one head. So then the event A is made up this, of the sample points HH, HT, and TH. So there's three sample points in this event. Now let's define event B a different way. We'll define event B as getting exactly one tail. Then the sample points in B are going to be head tail and tail head. So essentially we can define an event any way we like. We defined event A as getting at least one head and we defined event B as getting exactly one tail. Now the probability of an event is calculated by simply taking the sum of the probabilities of the sample points in the event. So all we have to do to calculate the probability of an event is sum up the probabilities of the different outcomes that are in the event. Uh, so for example, if we want to calculate the probability of event A of getting at least one heads, then we have to add up the probability of head head plus the probability of head tail plus the probability of tail head. Now the probability of each of these outcomes is going to be 1 over 4. And that's because each of the outcomes are equally likely. So using the classical method, we know that since there's four total possible outcomes, the probability of each outcome is going to be 1 over 4. So this is going to be equal to 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 which is equal to 3 fourths or 0.75. Now the probability of event B is going to be the sum of the probabilities of the sample points in event B. So it's going to be the probability of head tail plus the probability of tail head. Now again, the probability of each of these outcomes is equal to 1 over 4 because they're equally likely, and using the classical method, we get 1 over 4. So it's going to be 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4, which is going to be equal to 2 over 4, which is uh, 1 half or 0.5. Now let's take a look at a couple of other examples. Suppose that we select a card from a deck of 25 
playing cards. Sorry, that's um, 52 playing cards. Um, so let's look at the events of getting an ace and getting a club. Uh, first of all, the sample points in the event of getting an ace are uh, ace of clubs, ace of hearts, ace of diamonds, and ace of ace of spades. So there's four different suits for each different card. So um, there's four different aces that we can get. So this event has four sample points in it. Then the probability of getting an ace is going to be equal to the sum of the probabilities of these sample points. So it's going to be the probability of ace of club plus probability of ace of hearts plus probability of ace of diamonds plus probability of ace of spades. Now, uh, since there's 52 cards in a deck of playing cards, and each card has an equally likely chance of being selected, the probability of each of these is going to be 1 over 52. Again, we, we're using the classical method to get this. So it's going to be 1 over 52 plus 1 over 52 plus 1 over 52 plus 1 over 52, which is going to be equal to 4 over 52, uh, which we can simplify to 1 over 13. So the probability of getting an ace is 1 over 13. Now let's look at the event of getting a club. Now the sample points in the event of getting a club are all the different clubs. So there's going to be thir uh, 13 of them total. So those are two of clubs, three of club, four of club, up to queen of club, king of club, and ace of clubs. So there's a total of 13. Um, now to get the probability of getting a club, We simply add up the probability of each of these. So it's going to be the probability of two of clubs plus probability of three of clubs and so on up to a probability of ace of clubs. So it's going to be one over 52 because they all have the same chance of being selected. So we sum up 1 over 52 13 times. So it's going to be 13 times 1 over 52, which is 13 over 52, which is equal to 1 over 4. So the probability of getting a club is 1 over 54. Let's take a look at one more example. Suppose that our experiment is rolling a pair of dice. So first of all, let's calculate how many sample points there are. Now, to calculate the number of sample points in this experiment, we have to use the counting rule for multiple step experiments. Now recall that the counting rule for multiple step experiments says that if there are k steps with n1 possible outcomes in step 1 and 2 possible outcomes in step 2 and so on, then the total number of outcomes is going to be equal to n1 times n2 
up to nk. So in our example, there's going to be two steps, um, rolling the first die and then rolling the second die. So k is equal to 2. Uh, now the number of outcomes in step 1, the first die, is going to be 6. The number of outcomes in the second die is also going to be 6. So n2 is equal to 6. So the total number of outcomes is going to be n1 times n2, which is going to be equal to 6 times 6, which is equal to 36. Um, so the total number of possible outcomes in this experiment is going to be um, 36. Now let's write all 36 of those possible outcomes when we're rolling a pair of dice. Um, so one outcome is we get 1 on each of the rolls. Another one is we get 1 on the first roll and 2 on the second roll. 1 on the first roll and 3 on the second roll, and so on. So up to 6. And then we can get 2 on the first roll, 1 on the second roll, 2 on the first roll, 2 on the second roll, and so on. And this is our last row. Uh, in this row, the first roll is 6. 6, 4, 6, 5, 6, 6. So these are the 36 possible outcomes in this experiment. Now let's take a look at the event that the sum of the two rolls is equal to 7. So what are the sample points in the event that the sum of the two rolls is 7? So we have to look at um, in which of these outcomes do the two numbers add up to 7. So one of them is 6 and 1. Another is 5 and 2. Another is 4 and 3. So it appears that on the diagonal, all of those outcomes have a sum of 7. So these outcomes here okay. all of these outcomes have a sum of seven. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six different outcomes that give you a sum of seven. So the sample points in this event are six, one. 5, 2, 4, 3, 3, 4, 2, 5, and 1, 6. Um, so we have six sample points in this event. Now when we want to calculate the probability of this event, that the sum is 7, Again, all we have to do is sum up the probabilities in this event. So we have to calculate the probability of 6, 1 plus the probability of 5, 2 plus up to the probability of 1, 6. Now the probability of each of these is going to be 1 over 36 because they're all equally likely, and again, using the classical method, uh, we know that the probability of each outcome is going to be equal to 1 over the total number of possible outcomes. 
So it's going to be 1 over 36 plus 1 over 36, 6 times total. So this equals to 6 over 36, which is equal to uh, 1 over 6. So the probability of getting a sum of 7 when you roll a pair of dice is equal to 1 over 36. Now the second event we're going to calculate the probability of is that the sum is 9 or greater. So let's look at which of the uh, outcomes give you a sum of 9 or greater. Well, 6 and 3, 5 and 4, 4 and 5, and 3 and 6 uh, give you a sum of 9. So everything below that will give you a sum higher than 9. Right, so... Um, these ones here, 6 and 3, 5 and 4, 4 and 5, 3 and 6, give you a sum of 9. Then 6 and 4, 5 and 5, 4 and 6, those are 10. So as you go lower, you're going to get a higher sum. So all of these, all of these outcomes here give you a sum of 9 or greater. So the sample points in, um, in this event of getting a sum of 9 or greater are these uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And these, these 10 sample points make up the event that the sum is 9 or greater. And to calculate the probability of getting a sum of 9 or greater, we would simply add up the probability of um, each of those outcomes, and the probability of each of those outcomes is 1 over 36. So the probability of getting a sum of 9 or greater is going to be equal to 10 times 1 over 36, which is equal to 10 over 36. So the probability of getting a sum of 9 or greater is equal to 10 over 36.